In this video, I will go over the bones of the skeleton with you so that you are able to prepare for your exam and complete slab four. This is our skeletal model and you can see clearly the axial skeleton, head, neck, and trunk. So that includes our sternum and ribs. And then our appendicular skeleton, which will be our upper and lower limbs and their girdles. Recall that the axial and appendicular divisions of the body are very important because the axial skeleton and muscles will move different parts of the body than the appendicular skeleton and muscles. Another thing that the axial skeleton does is it protects your brain and your spinal cord, the vertebrae, it also protects the heart and your lungs. And your diaphragm would be here and then this is where your abdominal pelvic cavity would be. So these organs are actually very um, fragile, they're exposed, they don't have a bony protection. I think we've got a shoulder disc or a Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry there, buddy. Ouch. What a dislocated hip there. Oh, we're all kinds of messed up. There we go, buddy. Okay, so now we're ready to go through the bones here. So this is your frontal bone. This is your parietal. This is your temporal. your occipital. So these are cranial bones here. They're protecting the brain. And they will be separated by sutures. So let's take a look here again. Frontal bone. And this is the frontal suture or coronal suture. So remember we have the frontal or coronal plane that separates the body into anterior. That's the nose there. So anterior and posterior half. This is the sagittal suture and it separates the parietal bones from one another and it is along the sagittal plane dividing the body into right and left halves. So frontal bone, coronal suture, parietal bones, sagittal suture. Down here we have our occipital bone in the back and that's our lamboid suture because it has that lamba shape. In the temporal bone, we have the squamous suture. Um, you can kind of see little pieces of it here, little markings. Uh, I like to think about, you know, putting your um, hair behind your ears. That's that squamous suture. So that's the temporal. Now this is a beneficial skull here because I can open it and show you a couple other bones. There we go, voila. All right, again, this is the cranium. So we're looking at the base of our cranium where our brain would sit. Move the mandible. Um, this would be our frontal bone here. And then right here, this arrow-shaped bone is your ethmoid bone. And it is going to be quite an extensive bone. If you look up his schnoz there, eh. I'm one-handed here, so up here is the ethmoid bone as well, and way back in here. So it's basically going to be this bone here that lets all of the nerves that come from your nose through the skull and into the brain. Also makes the upper portion of your nasal septum. Another bone that you can see really well in here is the sphenoid bone. This is the sphenoid bone. All these little holes that we don't torture you with learning. You're so lucky. Um, this is the cella tersica. This is where the pituitary gland sits. It's the greater wing of the cella tersica, or the lesser wing. This is the greater wing. So the cella tersica is what we call the keystone bone of the cranium because all the other bones uh, connect to it. So like the frontal, even that ethmoid will connect to it. Uh, we've got our temporal and parietal here, parietal up here, temporal down here, and then your occipital. So it's the keystone bone of the cranium. And you can also see the ethmoid right here. So like when you're rubbing your temples right now, because I'm driving you crazy, 
That's your ethmoid bone or your sphenoid bone. So there it would be right there, your sphenoid. Okay? So again, frontal, parietal, occipital, um, temporal. Uh, and then we have our coronal suture, our sagittal suture, our occipital suture, and our uh, squamous suture. And then if we look up his schnoz there, we can see that ethmoid bone way up in there. And then looking back, like right here, and then also right here is our sphenoid bone, as well as here. Okay, now let's look at our face. Right, face. So this is the nasal bone, so it's like the bridge of your nose, nasal. Um, and then Right here is the lacrimal bone. You see that fossa there? That's where your tears drain. Your tears actually come across your eyes from the lacrimal gland and then drain down the lacrimal fossa. So that's a, a landmark for that lacrimal bone. Um, this is your zygomatic bone. Remember um, your cheeks, okay? Uh, this is your maxilla, your upper jaw. This is gonna be that keystone bone of the face. All your facial uh, bones uh, will connect to uh, the maxilla. This is your vomer right here. You see it kind of come out like this? Vomer means spade shaped. So it's that lower septum. So your septum's like your ethmoid bone and your vomer. And then you've got this like middle nasal concha in here. These concha help to spiral air. So when you breathe, it conditions the air got such a nice smile there uh, this is the mandible or the lower jaw Oop, I've dislocated his jaw these guys have it oh there you go all right um and then let's see there was something I wanted to show you ah, right here okay so another view of the maxilla is here this is your hard palate and so wherever your teeth are these alveolar margins of your teeth these are the Maxilla and then this is the palatine back here. Just this part. That's the palatine bone and then there's your vomer So if we were looking, you know Facing forward here your maxilla is going to be um, Connecting to your teeth and then the um, palatine uh, is where my <laughs> Again, I'm one-handed where your uh, There there where my thumb is that's the palatine and then this guy back here is the uh, vomer. So see where the nasal um, passageways are uh, through the nose? Isn't that cool? And then this big hole that you see there is gonna um, be where the spinal cord is gonna exit uh, from that cranial cavity there and go into the um, vertebral column. Okay, so we're gonna move um, inferiorly now, still along the axial skeleton here. I'm gonna dislocate his jaw for a second to show you this bone right here. This is your hyoid bone right here that I'm kind of moving <laughs> with my mandible. Sorry, guy. Let's see if I can open his mouth. Open your mouth. There it is. Right through there, there's that hyoid bone, okay? So this is gonna be a bone that moves your tongue. And it's not really gonna articulate with any other bone uh, directly um, it's got a lot of ligaments and stuff like that will um, connect to these processes here and connect to your tongue uh, so you can talk cats um, vibrate their hyoid bone uh, to purr okay moving down our axial skeleton to our vertebrae so we have um, Regions of the vertebrae that you know of at this point, you know that there's the cervical, so there's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the vertebra prominence there. And then here, notice we've got our ribs. So we've got 12 ribs and 12 thoracic vertebrae that are connecting uh, to those ribs, okay? So those are your thoracic vertebrae connected to the ribs. If you remember, I said the ribs are part of the axial skeleton. Um, because they connect directly to the thoracic vertebrae. And then these five guys um, will count from one, two, three, four, and five. So these five are your lumbar vertebrae. This is your sacrum and the coccyx. Uh, so we've got a couple of special um, vertebrae that you need to know. We've got this one, which is your 
Atlas. And then we've got this one, which is your axis. And they sit like this. And then um, the skull would sit on them uh, like this, because the body is facing forward. Bonk, there it is. So that's how it would sit, okay? And this is what allows you to um, nod your head. So the atlas is the one that the occipital bone is sitting on. So that would be our, our atlas right here. And so you nod your head up and down and he's got his head on quite stiff here. And then the axis, um, which is gonna be this guy. So number two there, you can see the axis, see him? That's cool, huh? Uh, and he is what allows you to go, no, he rotates your head, okay? That's what this little pivot is for. This pivot was once the body of the atlas, see how the atlas doesn't have a body anymore? But it sits right there on the axis. These are the spines, so they're facing um, posteriorly, um, as you can see here. So the spines face posteriorly. So that's the atlas and the axis. Um, and then we have another just regular cervical vertebra here that shows you the body. Um, and the, this is the uh, vertebral foramen where the uh, spinal cord will go through. Anytime you see a vertebrae that's got three holes in it, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a cervical vertebrae because there's a vertebral artery that goes through here that um, services your brain. And you can see uh, those holes here, okay? Um, and then next is our thoracic vertebrae. So the thoracic vertebrae look like a giraffe. They've got these articulating processes here that are flat, so it allows you to rotate your um, chest, you know, pretty well. Uh, and then they've got these um, costal facets that uh, attach to uh, the ribs there, okay? So um, the ribs and the thoracic vertebrae are buddy-buddy, and the thoracic vertebrae look like giraffes. Now the lumbar vertebrae are really thick. They've got a very thick body here because they bear a lot of weight. Um, and notice that uh, there's only one hole in both the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, okay? Um, and so no no vertebral arteries going through here. So three holes is cervical, one hole would be either thoracic or lumbar, and the uh, um, thoracic looks like the giraffe and connects to your ribs. And then the lumbar has this big body and a real thick spinal process, spinous process, that makes it look like the nose of a moose. And then its articulating facets are gonna face each other because we don't want to be able to move our lumbar vertebrae. We want them to stay like really um, locked together. Um, you can do just a little bit of, you know, uh, flexion um, and extension, but not uh, a lot of twisting movement there because we bear a lot of weight here, especially being bipedal animals. Um, this is a, an area for a lot of back pain uh, in people. So those are your lumbar vertebrae. Um, and notice in between the vertebrae, we have um, vertebral discs. And then you also can see these spaces in between the vertebrae. Do you see that? This is where all your spinal nerves will be coming out so that they can service, um, you know, the limbs and the trunk and things like that. Uh, and then at the base of the spine is our sacrum and our coccyx, our inferior most part of the spinal column here. This is our sacrum and our coccyx. These are fused vertebrae. You can see one, two, uh, three, something like four or so fused vertebrae, maybe five, I think it was five. One, two, three, four, five, yep. <clears throat> five fused vertebrae uh, that forms the posterior aspect of um, the pelvis here. <coughs> and so you can also see the coccyx right here. So this is a male. Um, you can see that the pelvis has got a sharp angle here and that the coccyx extends anterior orally. Um, in a female, this would be a lot broader uh, to allow for, you know, the passage of a child through the birth canal. Um, so this is a male coccyx and sacrum as well. So uh, the other thing is the ribs and the sternum. So this is the sternum. It's a big bone that's composed of three parts. Uh, this is the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process here. Manubrium, body, xiphoid process. 
Uh, our ribs, we've got, you know, a nice big rib here uh, to show you. This is the part that will attach to the thoracic vertebrae. Um, and it'll actually go that way. Uh, and so it kind of sits like that, if you would, okay? Um, and then this comes forward and would connect with the sternum. See how the flat parts of the ribs do? Now, you've got 12 pairs of ribs, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. Um, and we have um, seven pair of true ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have five pairs of false ribs, okay? And so the way we can tell that they're false ribs is because they indirectly attach to the sternum or not at all. So this is rib number eight, this is nine and 10. So notice they all come together and form one uh, costal cartilage that comes in and uh, connects to the body of the sternum. And then uh, ribs 11 and 12 are floating ribs because they don't even attach um, to cartilage at all. So that's what's the difference between um, the true and false ribs is uh, whether or not they directly attach uh, to the sternum or if they are indirectly attached. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven true ribs, one, and then eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 are your false ribs. Okay, so now let's move to the girdles here. Uh, that would be part of the axial skeleton. Um, so this is gonna be your clavicle and your um, scapula here. Uh, that's gonna be that acromion that we talked about, acromion uh, process, and then this will be the acromion end of your um, clavicle. So if we look at our sternum, the sternal end is gonna be kind of nice and bulbous here, and the acromial end will be flat. So that's the clavicle, and notice that it um, is curved anteriorly. That way if it snaps, it snaps anteriorly and doesn't go into your um, lungs there. That would not be good, it'd puncture a lung. Uh, and then this is the scapula. So the smooth interior of the scapula is what is actually going to be oh, that's so neat, in uh, connecting to the rib cage there. And that helps the scapula to glide smoothly over the rib cage, whereas these processes that are on the um, exterior or the posterior side of the scapula will attach to your rotator cuff muscles and your trapezius and you know um, infra uh, subscapular or subscapularis is under there. But this is supraspinatus, infraspinatus, all this. So that's your um, pectoral girdle. Okay, so. This is part of the appendicular skeleton because it's moving the upper limb. So the upper limb is going to be composed of the humerus. Okay, so there's our scapula and there's our humerus. Um, and then this guy is your radius, the one with the golf tee looking head here. And he's also on your thumb side. So that's the radius. And then the ulna is what helps you to actually flex your arm and it actually makes the elbow watch see how the elbow goes out like that that's your ulna okay um so if we look over here at our arm this is your arm um and so this will be the uh, humerus here um this is the anterior portion of the humerus so this is the part that connects to the ulna this is the part that connects to the radius and then that's the posterior humerus that's the part where you know it forms that elbow okay and that's the head of the humerus that connects to um, the the scapula here it would connect like that actually uh, the radius has this head here so that it can do this motion so we are this is a pivot much like the atlas and the axis so that's what your radius is doing right here okay and so remember your radius is thumb side so there's our our pollux, our thumb. Uh, and then the ulna, if you remember, it's doing this um, flexion, okay, like this. And so that's what this guy is for. It fits right here and helps you to uh, flex and extend your arm. So there's two movements going on at the arm. There's the pivoting of the radius and the flexion extension of the ulna. And um, this is one of the reasons why uh, we're so adept at using our upper limbs and then we also have our beautiful hands um, so this would be a, a, a lefty there you can see 
And um, these are going to be your carpals. Uh, these are your metacarpals. And then these are your uh, phalanges. Um, so as far as the carpals go, we're going to learn them by um, looking at a mnemonic. And they go from thumb side to pinky. So we do she looks too pretty. So let me show you from this way as well. Uh, she looks too uh, pretty. The, those are two separate bones. They just have to be fused together um, because of the model. So she looks too pretty. And then thumb side again, try to catch her. So this is your scaphoid here um, for your she. So scaphoid, lunate. All right, so um, try quetrum and then the um, pisiform. She looks too pretty. So um, scaphoid, lunate, try quetrum, pisiform. Try to catch her. So these are where my traps live, okay? So this is the trapezium. Trapezium connects to the thumb, trapezium thumb. Trapezoid is going to um, be your second digit, so your pointer finger. And this is the um, capitate, which is your middle finger, and then your hamate is gonna connect to the uh, ring finger and the pinky, okay? So um, trapezium, thumb, trapezoid, capitate, and then hamate. So she looks too pretty, try to catch her. So good luck with that. And then here's it from the other side. Um, we've got the she looks too uh, pretty. There's that piciform. Uh, try to catch her. So scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, piciform, trapezium, thumb, trapezoid, capitate, hemi. So that's your hand. Uh, so those are your carpals, your metacarpals, and your phalanges. Um, and he's all over the place, just jointed there. Okay, so then moving on to the lower limb, which is going to be longer uh, in humans um, than it will be in other um, like great apes and stuff because you know we're we're bipedal animals, and so um, we have our pelvic girdle, which is going to be our uh, pelvic bones, and then we have our femur, our patella. Um, excuse me, there, guy, tibia, fibula our uh, tarsals, our metatarsals, and our phalanges and our hallux there, okay? So let's um, go through these bones. This is the pectoral uh, pelvic uh, girdle here. So as you can see, we've got a, um, a left uh, foot. I would be showing you it on my body if we were in class, but um, I'll put it there, so that's where that goes. Um, and this is going to be actually made up of three bones that fuse together as you grow. So the top one is your ilium, and then the one that you sit on is your ischium. So that little tuberosity right there, that's your ischium. And then uh, the front one is your uh, pubis, okay? So remember, that's the pubic region there. So looking at it just like this, we can see that this top one with the crest is your ilium. Um, and then here's the one you sit on, that's your ischium, and then this is your pubis here. And where the two pubic bones join is your pubic symphysis. Um, and it's made up of the same type of cartilage as your intervertebral discs and even uh, the meniscus of your knees. Uh, this is the hip socket here, that's the tablum that fits into the head of the femur. So this is the femur. It's the biggest bone in the body. It uh, takes a lot of force uh, to break this bone, like a, an intense car wreck or, you know, getting stepped on um, by that dinosaur there. Um, you know, that'll break a femur pretty good. Uh, but otherwise, it's a really um, sturdy bone. Usually when you fall and break a hip, you break the neck of your femur first and then fall down. This part is very susceptible to osteoporosis, and this is what joins to the socket like this okay so take care of your bones get your exercise this is the patella so it's your kneecap there okay and it's going to be embedded um, in a ligament there but it's got this little patella um, you know fossa there from the femur 
Uh, and then we have our to be a bone, okay? To be a bone or not to be a bone, that is a question. Uh, this is T-I-B-I-A, don't mess it up. It's got this medial malleolus, that's the um, medial ankle there. And then this is your fibula. So I always remember when you fib, you lie. And um, I hope I'm putting it the right way, sorry about that. But this is your fibula, it's lateral, okay? Fibula, F-I-B-U-L-A. And it's your lateral ankle. So this is how your foot would sit on the um, tibia here. And so when you, you know, swing your feet doing dorsal, you know, and plantar um, flexion, that's what you're doing. And so the um, parcels here, this is your talus. This is the rounded one that's actually, you know, articulating with your tibia here. So that's your talus. Um, and then we have our calcaneus, which is our heel bone. It's your calcaneus. Uh, these are showing origin and insertions. That's what these colors are. Sorry about that. But that's your calcaneus, so talus and calcaneus. And the mnemonics here are the circus uh, needs more interesting little clowns. <laughs> So the is the talus and circus is the calcaneus. Needs is what we call the navicular bone. Uh, more interesting little. So these are your um, cuneiform um, bones. So this one would be medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, and lateral cuneiform. And then this is your cuboid. So the tarsals are a lot easier to see. They're bigger um, and they make this nice arch um, that supports a lot of weight there. Um, and then they articulate with the metatarsals. Um, so just remember T for, you know, toes, I guess. Metatarsals connect to your toes. And these are your phalanges um, in your toes. And of course, we've got our hallux there. So for the um, hand and uh, the foot there, just remember with the hand, we have our carpals. With the foot, we have our tarsals. Carpals, like carpal tunnel syndrome. Tarsals. Tarsals connect to your toes. Tarsals, toes. And then the ones in the middle are your meta. That's what meta means, middle. So um, these are your metacarpals in your hands. Okay, tarsals, metatarsals in your toes. And then these are all your phalanges. Your thumb is your pollux and your um, big toe is your uh, hallux. So this was a pretty lengthy um, video here, but uh, that's the whole skeleton in less than 30 minutes. Awesome. Bye.